Megan, it's hard to believe it, but for plan ahead types like me, spring is right around the corner and that means warmer weather and more time on the go. Today, we're talking about the Vionic Vitals collection from our longtime sponsor, Vionic Shoes. These are the best essential styles for everyday wear to get you ready for the season. There's the Uptown Loafer, a super cute, chunky loafer that comes in 10 different colors and collapses flat for easy packing. And there's also the Chardonnay Heeled Sandal, which I just ordered a pair of in a bright cherry red. I don't wear heels a ton anymore, but when I do, they are always Vionic because they're just so comfortable. Yeah, and I was excited to see that the Willa Slip-On Flat is part of the Vitals collection because I have those in a bright blue and they are so much fun. Elevate your wardrobe with Vionic Vitals, a meticulously crafted collection with daily wear styles designed for comfort and versatility. And of course, the entire collection features Vionic's exclusive Viomotion technology, which is what makes their shoes so comfortable and supportive. The company actually got their start by revolutionizing medical orthotics. And then, lucky us, they just continued that right into fashion footwear. They even offer a 30-day guarantee so you can wear them, love them, or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code THEMOMHOUR15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one-time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us, and we're the hosts of The Mom Hour. On this show, we're joined by a team of unique mom voices from across the country and in different stages of motherhood to bring you tips, ideas, and encouragement, and to help you feel a little less alone. We all know that motherhood is a lot easier when real moms share honest truths and remind each other that it's all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to The Mom Hour. Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 419 of the Mom Hour. I am Sarah Powers here with Megan Francis. Hey, Megan. Hey, Sarah. So we're talking about graduations today, graduations of all kinds, um, and more specifically how we as moms make it through this (laughs) season, Um, and whether we cry, spoiler alert, yes, we do. So I'm excited to dig into this topic. And I just wanted to start by asking, do you have anyone graduating from anything this year? And you can use that. You can apply that label liberally, um, promoting, advancing, like uh, having a rite of passage. So the most, um, I guess, notable one is that Clara is going to be finishing eighth grade and then she's going to be a high school next year. Um, Owen is going to be like a rising senior, I guess they call it. That feels pretty monumental, but it's not like he's leaving the building. You know, he's not, right. there's nothing happening. There's not, there's no end to 11th grade that has any kind of um, hoopla around it. For me, I will, this will be the first time I will have only high schoolers. So I feel like I should get a party. Yeah. So you're like graduating from being a middle school mom in, yes. and with all your, the spread of your five kids, you've had somebody in middle school for a pretty long time. Yeah. And I, I will say like when I graduated from, and we've, you know, we've covered this ground a million times that when I graduated from being an elementary school mom, there was like the opposite of pomp and circumstance because it was COVID. So like nothing happened. And that was pretty like monumental because by that point I had been a mom of elementary school kids for like 16 years. It had been a long time. Like that kind of just went by. Then I had a, I had an, uh, couple of middle schoolers and a high schooler. And then I had two high schoolers and a middle schooler. And then I had a high schooler and a middle schooler. And now I'm just going to have high schoolers, which is really weird. It is weird. And um, I know we're going to get into like, at what point in educational journeys, kids typically graduate. But just to clarify, uh, Clara does not actually have an eighth grade graduation, correct? She's just moving on, changing schools, but you are not attending a graduation. I am not. No. Um, and they, I know we're going to talk about like what that looks like. I think it's changed a lot over the years. Um, and I have thoughts about that. Like I have thoughts about pomp and circumstance. That's why we're here today. We both do. That's why we're here. Yeah. And we, (laughs) and we are going to dig into like our, our feelings on the idea of everyone graduating at every step of the way from everything. Um, okay. Well, just for me checking in about this year. Um, so this year my kids are in ninth grade, seventh grade and fourth grade. But we are at a middle school that actually is a four year independent middle school that bridges sixth, seventh, eighth and ninth grades. And those who choose to stay for the ninth grade year at our middle school 
it's a really, really, I mean, talk about, we're going to be talking about ritual and ceremony and meaning. Um, This ninth grade year at our school is kind of similar to like a senior year at a high school. It's a really important year. There's a lot of rites of passage and, and pomp and circumstance almost throughout the whole experience. So my ninth grader is, they don't call it graduating. They call it rites of passage. And there is an actual um, ceremony, an actual event, um, in early June. And so my ninth grader will, um, pass, pass from this middle school and then start, um, as a sophomore next year at the public high school. So that's a big one in our family. Nobody else is advancing anywhere except to the next grade. So Violet will go from fourth to fifth at the elementary school and Reed will go from seventh to eighth at that same middle school, but there's not, um, it's not quite as monumental as Luke. Well, I know that th- that we're going to talk more about and, um, you know, like what these. I guess what these rituals look like, ceremonies look yeah. like, and but I'm curious if you have feelings about that. Like, do you ever feel like, well, this is a little much or oh, they, these kids don't get enough recognition or like, do you have feelings either way? I do. It's in my experience as a mom, it has been. Individual to each. um each time I have different feelings and I have had feelings all the way from this is ridiculous. Why are we putting (laughs) five-year-olds in caps and gowns? I actually have some strong feelings about the performative nature of really tiny kids wearing caps and gowns. And and mostly uh, it's not about the kids or the teachers of, or the schools very well-meaning, but I don't like when we ascribe more mature um, rituals yes. to small it's children, like dressing up a whole bunch of little kids that's like they're going to prom or something. Yes, like, or like they're getting <laughs> yes. married. You know how you and I yeah. both don't like when we say yeah. little kids have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It it like it's that, and it feels very much for the parents' Instagram yes. for me. It feels very yeah. much like a school or a system taking advantage of parents' natural sentimentality, which we all have, and then turning it into this thing that means very little for the child. So yeah, there, there's a cynical part of me that just feels like, ugh, I, I'm not sure of everybody's <laughs> intentions in doing a ton of elaborate graduations at a very young level. That's just me. Now you yeah. asked if I, if I have had experiences where it has felt meaningful when my kids have had some kind of a promotion or rite of passage in their younger years. And there have, been, there absolutely have been, but I think what it is, is it's usually commensurate with their, their emotional investment in whatever they've just been through, because it could be a scout program. It could be a sport. Um, my kids in martial arts have had very, very meaningful, um, black belt ceremonies. So it's not that I don't think, um, we should mark ritual around younger kids events. It's specifically for me. I can get a little cynical about doing the cap and gown thing with teeny tiny kids who don't get it. And I'll stop there. Yeah. Well, and I think sometimes, it, sometimes also, um, parents get a hold of things and wreck them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one, <laughs> so one example that I'm thinking of is that my kids um, used to have an eighth grade formal, it was like not a really formal dance. It was like a special, I believe, spring dance. And it was supposed to be the thing that only eighth graders could go. Mm-hmm. And it was like, it kind of marked the end of the year. So it wasn't a, it wasn't really like a graduation, but it was like a special dance, like a special, this is your Are last you dance like a- as a junior high. Yeah. Um, as a, you know, middle school kids. Well, it was supposed to be pretty low key and age appropriate, but then you had girls coming in like pageant dresses, like thousand dollar dresses. Ooh. Then you had kids getting dropped off in limos oh, by limos. Boy. And then the school was like, literally saying, don't do that. Like we will not do not bring a limo through this, you know, the school drop off line, which is essentially, essentially what it is for these eighth graders. Like we're not doing that. And they just kept doing it. So they canceled it. They don't have it anymore. And it, it's really sad for the kids who might've had a fun time at that party and just wanted to go in like a skirt and a shirt or like, you know, jeans or whatever they wanted to wear and not have to worry about all that mess and all that expense. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that was an example where parents got their hands on something and and kind of wrecked it. Yeah. Um, the other memory I have now, Clara is not having that this um, this year. She will not be having an eighth grade ceremony of any sort. But they used to do an eighth grade awards ceremony. And I feel like that was an example of the school. It was like well-meaning, but what it ended up being 
was you would sit for two hours in the gym mm-hmm. and the same kids get called up to yeah. get awards mm-hmm. over and over and over for the entire time. And then finally you get to the end and it always ran over. It was always too long. Yeah. Half the parents are checked out. The kids don't care. They don't want to, you know, the kids who aren't getting awards don't want to be there. Yeah. And then at the very end, it's like, yeah. And all the rest of these kids are going on to high school. Yay. Give them all a hand. And, and I'd feel like, why did I just, and it almost wouldn't even have mattered if one of my kids had been one of the ones getting up for the awards. Cause then it's almost just embarrassing. I don't know. There is something about it that it's not that those kids shouldn't be acknowledged and celebrated, but like you really can't celebrate every kid there for like their individual contributions because there's no award for that. And it would just feel a little boring and gross by the end. And they can that. And I applaud them for that. Cause I don't think it was very inclusive and I don't think yeah. Most people really wanted to be there, except the braggy ones who could then go on Facebook and post pictures of their kids getting 8 million awards. So, and it also got quite competitive. Like, um, there were stories about like eight, like some kids not getting a certain award that was completely subjective. Like, um, the kind where the teachers nominate certain yeah. kids and then parents getting really mad that their kid didn't get it. And then like going to the school board, like, like that kind of thing. Anytime I feel like something gets amped up like that, or there's like a value put on it like that, it kind of makes room for the more pushy people to like, I don't know, have something to complain about. And that's the last thing teachers need to deal with right now. I mean, as I'm listening to you talk, parents can kind of be the worst and we are all, (laughs) we are all um, doing our best, but there is this time of year, and this is not even like where this episode, like where we thought it was going to go, but this time of year does ratchet up the emotionality, the, the pride we feel and pride in a really genuine, authentic way, but also probably in a way that is less grounded and maybe more about our own ego. And then you just combine all that. And man, it's a lot. We, we had a, um, award ceremony system at a previous school that I was at years ago that I, I had to like give myself like a, a, a night off after, because I would be so, I probably boxed you after multiple times. Probably. I was so frustrated with award ceremonies are so tricky. And somehow the one we were at managed to combine the worst of all worlds, which is, it was both particip- participation trophy land where like Everyone got something, which that's problematic, I think, in in a lot of ways. But then it was also kind of elitist, like you were talking about, where only certain kids were acknowledged and and people felt bad. So somehow, like, it managed to make everyone feel bad. It didn't make... Well, right. And the participation trophy thing I know has gotten a lot of... um, I feel like it becomes one of those things that's sort of like... What's the word I'm looking for? It becomes shorthand for, like, everything that's wrong with parenting today. And I don't believe that. Like, there's nothing wrong with re- recognizing effort yeah. or you're a good person. You try, blah, blah, blah. But kids know better. If they get a trophy for <laughs> just showing up, like, they know that's not that's not commensurate with what happened. Yeah. Like, kids aren't dumb. They understand the difference, right? So, like, I wish there was a way to just really acknowledge that everyone in this room has made it through yeah. middle school. And that was hard. And you're going to go to high school. And that's exciting. Yeah. Good for all of you. So I just want to say that if anyone listening has a school or a system that does these <laughs> kinds of recognitions really, really well, I would love just just email us. I'm just so yeah. curious because I I don't think we mean to be super negative or bash any one school. It's just a really tricky line to walk. And I would argue back to our whole how we got here, which is talking about really little kids. I would argue that the younger the student set, the more it becomes about parent egos. And that, yes, I really well, react against. It's not necessarily the school's fault. It's things get, things just get, they don't land yeah. always on the many hundreds of parents who are involved. Um, they don't land the same with everybody. And then you have to deal with all of that yeah. fallout too. And, and to be clear, I don't think either of us is saying that um, we should protect our kids or ourselves from ever feeling like, Oh man, my kid like didn't, yeah. didn't quite no, no, make the team. I don't think so. I mean, I think, I think you and I both believe that is part of the learning that goes on is, is not getting the award or not getting chosen for the thing. Um, but somehow when we ceremonialize it all, it, it can become about all the, the not so great parts and we can lose yeah. that, just that reverence for 
progress and that reverence yeah. for truly advancing to the next stage. Okay. Well, I will say, let me just round this out by, by throwing out two circumstances or two examples, I guess, of ways that I think ends of things and beginnings of next things have been acknowledged in my kids' lives really well. Yeah. So Jacob had a Montessori preschool graduation. It had zero trappings of a grad ceremony, like no little caps, no none of that. Five-year-olds. No, the kids just sang. Yeah. They just like got up and sang. It was really sweet. I think it was just one of those like kind of hippie schools and the teacher was named Miss Candy. And she was just like one of those mesmerizing teachers that can make all the kids stop in their tracks without raising her voice yeah. above like a whisper, basically. And it was very sweet. And I felt like all we did was celebrate the fact that this little class of kids did a year together. Yeah. And now they won't be together. It was it. It was yeah. like that was the whole thing. And then um, all of my kids, except for Clara, because she got robbed um, <laughs> in the pandemic, had an end of year picnic. The whole elementary school had an end of year picnic. Now I have issues with potluck, but that's my issue. <laughs> um, I would just eat a lot of chips and like baked goods because they skeeved me out less than like the mayonnaise salads. Anyways, um, but the fifth graders got to like play softball against the teachers. Like there was little ways that they kind of made it more special for the fifth graders. And man, those kids really looked forward to that. Like that was a big, exciting deal to have that picnic where you were very casually. Nobody, there was never even a time where we all had to stop and like listen to someone talk at the same time. It was very casual, but it felt really special. And I felt like, Hey, look, all these kids just got recognized. You could show up with no food. Nobody would know. You could like, it, there was no expectation on parents. It was just like the best. It was yeah. special and low key and wonderful. And I think that was some thought that can be done. I don't think that's always, I don't think that always meets parents' expectations when they want to brag about their kids though. And that's, yeah, that's, you know? <laughs> that's where it gets tricky. Um, yeah. Well, I will say that our sixth grade read last year did have a sixth grade graduation from the public elementary school that was lovely, really, really well done. And it was a ceremony. It was a sit down yeah. graduation ceremony. It felt perfectly appropriate for sixth grade. It was really a coming through COVID. There was a lot of messaging mm. um, and acknowledgement of what those kids had been through in their later elementary school years. We were even pretty new to the school and I felt very moved by the whole thing. So I think it, it really can be done well. And those kids absolutely were graduating from a sixth grade smaller bubble and going off to lots of different junior highs and situations. It felt, it felt like we said, commensurate with the, the, the life milestones they had actually reached and not yeah. just about the pomp and circumstance. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies, but having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product. The algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean, bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh, minty essence in every bottle, so you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. Sarah, have you seen the new collection from our sponsor, Vionic? It's called Vionic Vitals, and it offers some of Vionic's best essential styles for everyday wear to help you get ready for the spring, which is not that far off, by the way. The Willa Slip-On Flat is in the Vitals collection, and I have to say, I have a pair of Willas, and they are one of my favorites. This shoe has classic and classy loafer styling with a seriously supportive footbed, and they come in over 12 colors to complement any outfit. I've also got a pair of Vionics Uptown loafers on the way, which I'm really excited about because they collapse flat for packing. I'll definitely get a ton of use out of those when I'm traveling this spring. I know. And that feature is so smart. Well, Megan, I am also very excited about the Vionic Vitals collection. These are versatile daily wear styles that feel as good as they look. Yeah. And let's talk about that comfort, Sarah. 
Vionic actually got started by revolutionizing medical orthotics. Today, they continue to use that science to engineer shoes that are super cute and also feel great on your feet. Vionic even offers a 30-day guarantee. Wear your shoes, love them, or return for a full refund within 30 days. Use code THEMOMHOUR15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's one-time use only. Vionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Okay, so we're going to actually talk about pomp and circumstance, including the music itself, Megan. But as we're looking back on the, the younger kid graduations that have been a part of our parenting lives, I had this memory. This often happens to me when we're talking or prepping an episode. I don't think of something. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh. So when I this is this is um, takes the cake for the youngest graduation like event I have ever been at. When I was in a free mom's group at the hospital after I had my first baby, that's where I met like all my first mom friends. And it was a free weekly group. It was kind of led by the lactation consultant nurse lady and it had speakers and stuff. And every few months they would have, I am pretty sure they called it a graduation, like a graduate. We were graduating from whoever was around a year old. So when your baby was about a year old, every few months there would be, they'd have a cake. And it would be a little bit, they'd take a picture of everybody and they would essentially say, you and your baby have graduated You're from done. this program. <laughs> and now looking back, it was absolutely to kick us out because think of those like fragile yes. new moms and we'd all made friends and we were finally like really enjoying coming to this little session and it had been so raw and so hard in the new days. And now our babies are eight, oh nine, gosh. 10 months. Now they're 12 months. If they didn't do something like that, we for sure would have kept coming. There'd be like 150 moms exactly. and babies, like toddlers and preschoolers all smashed into one room. And, and you really, yes. it was, it was pretty unstated, but pretty clear that you, you did not come anymore after you graduated. And somewhere I do have pictures. Um, and you know, I think they just did it maybe once a quarter and whoever's babies were a year, like, so maybe so, you could ride it out till 14 or 15 months at the most. Yes. And the next time the cake came in, you were out. So we graduated from free baby class. Um, in- so the moms graduated. I mean, it was like, a, yeah, it was yeah. like, moms, you, you can do this yourselves now. Yes. Like it's t- you take the baton. You're on your own. You can yep. meet up with your same friends, which we did. We moved yep. to more of like a play group situation. So anyway, that made me smile as um, graduations are important in that they do create um, a finality and a goodbye. Um, and yeah. sometimes we need that. Sometimes yeah. we would like to keep coming. Brian kept living in his fraternity after he had graduated and there needed to be um, an exit plan. We need to push yes. out of the nest at some point. So that just made me kind of laugh. This is an aside. Um, do you remember being at your high school graduation? I remember very clearly and, and I didn't graduate college, so I don't have this memory about college and I feel like it would be different anyway. Um, in a college situation, but like in high school, sitting there with the, there was only 80 kids in my graduating class, something like that, 80 or 90 and looking around and thinking, they keep saying, I'm not going to ever be in like with all these people at the same time. I just don't believe that though. Like I just didn't believe it. I had spent, you know, years now walking the halls with this group and it kind of didn't feel real that that was going to change. And of course, and I thought, oh no, we'll all see each other at a party. We'll all see each other at a reunion. That didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> I saw some of them, but there were literally people that I saw on that day that I never saw again. And yeah. what a weird thing that is. Um, and a hard, how hard to grasp in the moment. It is hard to grasp in the moment. I think my experience is super different. My graduating class was at least 500. I know my freshman class was 680. I know we had whittled down because some people don't finish. Um, but hundreds of people and most of my connection to my high school was through choir and madrigals. I had my, most of my friends were either older or younger. I had very little emotional connection to like being Santa Barbara high senior class of 1998. Like I just, um, not like I didn't care. Or I blew it off, but I don't remember that kind of that feeling. I think it was such a big, like giant football stadium. So kind of like a college more like graduation, which, yeah. yeah. And my yeah. friends were either older or younger. So I didn't feel particularly right. tied to the people in my class. Plus there were 500 of them. So, right. Yep. Well, one thing that did happen, I'm sure at both of our high school graduations was some kind of processional or recessional or both to 
Pomp and Circumstance. Do you remember yes. the music? I mean, I, I know you yeah. know the music now. Okay. <laughs> did your school, though, play like did the orchestra from your school player or was it like over uh, or the band oh, or was it like over a uh, loudspeaker? Question. I'm going to guess that the band played because we had, we had a pretty thriving, mean, we had a big school and a thriving music program. So I'm going to guess it was live. I do remember as a singer, we sang maybe America the Beautiful, a few of the graduating yeah. madrigals and maybe the underclassmen, too, even though they weren't graduating. So there was definitely singing, too. But. Yeah, Pomp and Circumstance would have been orchestral, probably, or band. How about you? So we, yes, I believe every high school graduation I've been to around here, including mine, and then my kids who are at a different school, a bigger school, um, the band plays. And it's funny, the band is way better at this school than it was at my high school. (laughs) So, like, they just did a nicer job with that song. And then when I was in high school, the Redbud Chorale sang the national anthem. And I remember we had to stand really weird like with our ha- like a like weird salute thing in front oh. of our chest did oh you do my. that like I... we had to have one arm behind our back and like the other arm was like bent at like in oh. front of our chests like a like that was the singer salute literally i was gonna say like uh, much pomp and circumstance which yes. by the way i did learn that that comes from shakespeare as so many of our yeah. um phrases do it's from a line from othello the fact that we say pomp and circumstance and then the music pomp and circumstance I also looked up a little a little historical significance of how it started got um got started being used in graduations and became so widespread. So I'll link it up a, a nice little NPR piece. But I I guess what I want to talk about is the emotionality as a parent of you of hearing those few bars of music and what they what they do to us because yeah. I think it's pretty universal. I mean I know we spent the first part of this episode doing a little bit of griping about some, some of this. Now I'm going to completely turn the table and, and just say that I think it's hugely meaningful to watch and then to combine with that piece of music, kids, young adults, um, walk slowly wearing something ritualistic. The whole thing is very moving to me. And I I thought we could just talk a little bit about what those emotions are. I, I will say, I feel very moved by coming together and acknowledging that it didn't look pretty, but each of these kids has come through something to stand where they are today. I'm actually much more moved by the kids who have a hard time because of learning differences or family situations or than than I am by the valedictorians. It's very, very like it makes me cry every single time to think of kids struggling to get to a point and then standing up there in a cap and gown. It's just, it's all the feels. Um, there's something about, okay. So first of all, I can't even hear that song without crying. And the, um, I think you're going to link up that NPR story. I was, I thought it was funny that they offered like seven alternatives (laughs) to pomp and circumstance. Like if this song is getting tired, you could always try one of these. And I'm like, who would do that though? Like to me, it has to be that song. It's just the song that is lodged in some place in my soul that says that's what here we're here to do today. Um, and I, you know, I, that goes way back to being a little kid watching my siblings graduate yeah. and hearing that song. And I think for me, it's it's a little tricky because it's really hard for me to put my finger on why it brings up such big emotion, because I would feel that emotion, whether it was my kids or not my kids, um, whether yes, I was I just at somebody else's. And there's, it's something similar to like orchestra and choir concerts or weddings. There's like, there's the part that it's like, um, the, we are gathered here today part that really kind of gets me. I love when I look out at all of those kids and see hundreds of young adults thinking like these kids weren't even all friends and like, they weren't all friends. Some of them didn't get along. Um, some of them were more popular than others, whatever. But for this moment, like they're all sort of, even the valedictorians they are all still wearing caps and gowns. They're equalized. And like, they're all hopeful. There's yeah. something just about it that like, I'm getting kind of choked up now. Yeah. So, but it's like pride and nostalgia and like excitement. And then that sadness, it's bittersweet. It's like, it's all of the things. And it kind of comes out of nowhere. And every time I don't think it's going to get me and every single time it does. Yeah. I I agree. And I, I often, you talk about looking around at all the kids from their different, you know, their, and all their differences. I think I also enjoy looking around at the 
people who've shown up for them. And I feel hugely emotional thinking about, you know, it's like really hard. (laughs) It's really hard to be a parent and to shepherd a kid through their various phases. And then to see, yes, the we are gathered here today is a good way to put it, to see the setting aside of all the complicated feelings and interfamily dynamics and, you know, divorced parents coming together and the the grandparents showing up and like the tattooed uncle, I don't know, I'm, I'm leaning into cliches, but there's something really moving about seeing community members show up for a graduating kid, regardless yep. of the, the, the GPA or the performance or where they're headed next. It's like, yes, it's like hitting pause on all of that and gathering. And I think that is what makes ritual so meaningful. It's, it's so, it's so emotional. Um, I have to say, so I explained at the beginning that my ninth grader is, um, graduating in a way. And this ninth grade class is 24 kids or something. It's very small. Their ceremony includes each of them having, um, a teacher speak on their behalf or speak about them briefly. So it's, it's a, it's like the, I think everyone will be crying almost the entire time because it has that (laughs) It has that intimate yeah. nature and um, the kids have been together. So it's it's the opposite of what I described of my high school graduation being quite large and rather impersonal for me. Um, and I'm just, I have to admit, I'm kind of just stealing myself against, it's not that I don't want to cry or don't want to be emotional, but it's, it's vulnerable and exhausting to be that like, yeah. um, and to feel those feels that prolonged amount of time. So I, and around so many other people and to just know you're yeah. just going to be with waterworks the whole time. Yeah. Yes. So think of me, pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'll, I'll hold, I'll cling to a tissue for you, Sarah. Yes. Well, you've had three kids, uh, graduate from high school. Um, did you cry differently? Cry same. <laughs> Do you remember your emotional experience as a mom any differently first, second, third time? No, I think it was the same all three times. Yeah. Like those memories for me may as well be the same. Okay. I mean, the same location, same sea of blue and gold, yeah. same, like, you know, same people speaking, uh, not the kids obviously, but the school board and like, they always do the thing with the, it's always kind of the same. Yeah. Um, no. And I don't, it's not like a, I don't sob. I just sit there with tears running down my face constantly yeah. for probably 30 minutes. Or right. Like welling up on yes. the. Yeah. And it's amazing how it can get you. It's um, often for me, it will be like a kid who's not even my kid. Some, some little tiny kid who struggled with something or somebody whose single mom is there. I don't know. There's just like, there's um, being witness to everybody's experience is what feels almost more overwhelming to me than of course I feel sentimental and proud and all those things about my own kid, but it's the collective Yes. That brings me that like takes the tears from behind to all the way forward and down the face. Yeah. Like I should just say that this has nothing to do with me being like I'm seeing and I'm not judging this at all, but I am seeing it play out now on Facebook again. And I see this every year around this time. Um, parents who really are not OK with their kids graduating, like they're ha- oh, they're really oh. struggling, like they're really having a hard time with this transition. Oh. I've even, I even saw something the other day, like someone posted, you know, check in on your parents of seniors. They are not okay or something. And I was like, that feels a little extra to me, but there is like a real sentiment of being people being very sad. that oh, Their kids okay. are graduating high school and moving on to the next big thing. That ain't it for me. No, that's I'm, not I'm, why I'm, crying. I'm not there yet, but that's not what I would anticipate feeling either. It's, it's yeah. everything else we've talked about this, the, the meaningfulness and the, yeah. the ritual. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you mentioned, you know, the, the other kids and things like that are the kids who were struggling. I feel like our school always has, I don't know, three or four kids get up and talk briefly. Like there, I think the valedictorian talks, but then other kids seemingly randomly chosen. And I'm sure it's not random. Um, also get up and talk and there'll always be one who you can tell is kind of a dork and, but everybody gets a bunch of laughs, you yeah, know, like, yeah. like you know, there's one who's, um, maybe like the athlete everyone likes, but isn't the most academic kid. And like, yeah. it's just, it's really fun to see. And I think that that is another thing. It's like all these kids realize that the responsibility of becoming adults together and how like, I don't yeah. know, I'm going to cry, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think kids have gotten a little more kind too, yeah. since I will just say, since I was in high school, I think kindness has sort of been baked in to 
um, philosophy and, and like into the curriculum really yeah. in a way that yeah. it kind of wasn't when I was in high school. So you see all those movies from like the eighties and nineties where the kids are being total jerks yeah. at graduation. Yeah. I've never witnessed a single moment of yeah. anything disrespectful or mean, just like everyone's so happy to be there together. Yeah. So all right, I'm going to stop talking because I'm about to start crying. Like, no, I've got, it, I, I've got I, yeah. a box of tissues next to me. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. And I will have two graduations to go to this year. Uh, my nephew, Jack, is okay. graduating. I will probably ball at yeah. that because Jenna's going to cry. Yeah. And then it's her first graduate. It's her first graduate. And, you know, I've known little Jack since he was a little like, four pound preemie. Yeah. Um, and then Quinn. I probably won't make it to Quinn's actual graduation, but it's two big events coming up this year. Yeah. Get it, get ready. Tissue pack, the mini oh, tissue oh. packs, like order, <laughs> order them now. Oh okay. boy. I'm glad I haven't put my mascara on yet today. We are welcoming back Dr. Mom Butt Balm as a sponsor today. And Megan, I guess you must be back to changing diapers again, right? Now that you have a step grandbaby in the mix. I have changed a few lately, Sarah. And yeah, it really takes me back to that memory from early motherhood. I actually always enjoyed diaper changes unless they were the really gross toddler ones or if there was diaper rash involved. Oh my gosh, yes. I remember being so stressed out, like gearing up for the saddest diaper change ever. Your baby knows it's going to hurt. You know they're going to cry. It is just the worst. And having to use goopy, gross diaper rash cream definitely didn't help. Dr. Mom Butt Balm was developed by a mom who's also a doctor when she couldn't find any traditional products that worked for her baby's persistent diaper rash. This pediatrician-approved formula is made with all quality ingredients and no artificial dyes or preservatives. And since it's easy to remove, you won't have to wipe and wipe to get it off of your baby's skin. That is so important, especially if they're already a little chafed. And I love the way this formula feels. A little goes a long way. Don't let diaper rash come between you and your baby. Shop for Dr. Mom Butt Balm online at Amazon or Walmart today. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar, they have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, and I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution, Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash MomHour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. All right. So we have dried our tears. We have Mine stopped. Still flowing. <laughs> we have stopped the pomp and circumstance music from triggering all of the tears. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the practical realities of parenting through graduation season. And we are going to mostly be talking about high school graduation um, in this case, because you've had three. You had Will last yeah. year. I've had yep. zero and won't for a few more years. And I don't even really have like family, friends or nieces or nephews. I, I have not attended a high school graduation probably since the year after no since my sister who's eight years younger so a long long time um so I just have a few questions for you starting with are some of the same things we did still a thing like do do kids send out graduation announcements with like senior photos I seem to remember like that like the actual paper official yeah. formal card. Is that still a thing? And what else has changed in terms of what's expected of graduating kids and families this time yeah. of year? So I can only speak for the region I'm in, obviously, but yes, the graduation announcement is still very big. Um, I, with Will, we did probably, he was the kid of the three so far who've graduated that cared the most about doing all the things, right? So like, 
he wanted to have a more open house type party. The other two boys, like we had a family and friends party for each Jacob and Isaac. Um, that there, because there's so many kids in our family, there, there was a lot of people there, but only their best friends stopped by as far as like friends. It wasn't really like a big party for the friends. And they did not, as I recall, hand out invitations just to random people. But it is still very much a thing that like kids will go to school with a stack of invitations and hand them out to okay. like anybody. I already have questions. I, I'm wondering if this was not a thing when I was growing up. So you're saying an open house style graduation party would be for like people are party hopping around to different yes. people's houses because everyone's graduating. It's not like it, and it ha- my birthday that's how party. it is too. Okay. Like there are weekends where people's social calendars are completely booked up because they've got three graduation parties to go to and you go and you get a burger at one and a beer. Maybe you drop off your money because it's a cash grab. Sure. Um, okay. <laughs> in the box with the slot and you say hi to the graduate briefly. They're always surrounded by their friends anyway. And then you go to the next one. And I've been on that train, depending on the year and how many friends my kids might have in a graduating class. Because like last year, it was more parties I had to go to because Will had graduation. Well, first of all, he was graduating. So his friends were graduating. But he also had um, he had invitations out to those families. So it's kind of like Like, you scratch my back. I'll scratch yours kind of a thing. And then there's years where I don't know anybody who's graduating. But I mean, sometimes kids will give out like, for example, the neighborhood restaurant where I used to hang out at the bar with my sister-in-law and brother and a couple other friends pretty regularly and was friends with the owner. So we were there kind of a lot. Um, the waiters gave me their graduation announcements oh and gosh. wanted me to come to their parties because they thought we were friends, I guess. I guess like, or they thought you, know, you they were would, rolling in dough and could I toss guess, them. Or like, you know, and sometimes it was very sweet. Sometimes yeah. it was because they just really liked us. And they're like, hey, do you want to come to my graduation party? And there was one kid named Lucas. And I was like, Lucas, I would love to come. I can. I'm out of town. But I thought it was kind of sweet. But sweet. also, but also they want money. <laughs> and, and they're pretty open about that. Like, there doesn't really seem to it's be a, a lot of shame in that game. It's a shared understanding that this is. Yes. This, okay. Teachers will get stacks of graduation oh invitations. So, again, it could be regional. But I will say in this small town in the Midwest. uh, Yeah. It's, it's very much a thing. What I did was I ordered really nice invitations on uh, minted for Will, but I only ordered 50 and I said, I'm sending a bunch of these to family. So you get what's left over and that's how many you get to give out. Okay. It's so like, he didn't get to go paper the school yeah. with like his announcements. Um, he was pretty judicious about who he invited. I think a couple teachers dropped by some family, like some friends, parents, and maybe 15 of his buddies. And then mostly it was um, family friends. Like mostly it was my friends, honestly, right. who wanted just to come by and hang out in the yard and have a burger so and say, hey. I, uh, my mind is spinning and I cannot wait for listeners to tell us whether we're talking regional differences or generational differences or if I, ha- if either one of us is having a, a unique experience, probably me. Let me tell you what I remember from my own growing up. I remember ordering the kind of formal, very nice stationary cardstock announcements. I think we called them announcements and not, I guess they technically you were, you could have either one. Okay. You can, yeah, you can either one. And I guess it included an invitation to the graduation itself at, at the high school, um, kind of like a wedding invitation or something, but ours, I, if I remember, we would have mailed them to mostly out of town aunts and uncles, um, grandparents, that kind of thing. I did. My grandparents, I think, came and my one of my aunts came. So there was definitely an extended family component. And I would have received some cash in some cards from my family. I don't remember being invited to, knowing about, and certainly not hosting anything like what you're describing. And the mm. the paper inv- the paper announcement invitations weren't didn't, weren't tied to a party at all. They were tied to either the, the graduation itself, like here's where it'll be at the high school, or just send me money in a congratulations card. And maybe that was happening in my town and I had no idea, but I don't remember friends doing that. I don't remember um, people would go to, to dinner with their families. I remember like one of my closest friends in high school was a year younger. And when the following year I was home from college and I went to a graduation dinner, like at a restaurant with her parents and her grandparents. And that was festive, but 
I literally, like, as you're talking, I'm like, I don't even have a corollary, not even like a, something yeah. slightly similar. So I'm so curious where the differences are, but I'm also fascinated to learn. It sounds like fun, but also a little bit of pressure to make it to well, all those also, and expensive. It can also be, it can also feel a little, uh, mercenary. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we have done it in a way that has, has really worked with my kids. Like personalities, what their preferences are. Um, also our budget. So we had a backyard barbecue and probably all told the whole day. This includes like people coming with their families, our friends, you know, family members, like maybe 50 people came through. It was really fun. I was actually really glad we did it because we had moved not too, you know, not too long before. And, um, you know, being from a divorced family, it was kind of nice. Like John came and ran the grill and my ex-mother-in-law came in. So that was nice because otherwise, when are we all going to be together? Yeah, like no, that? I think it's great. Yeah. But ours was very low key compared to many. Like there are, I went to some that were catered. I went to some that were like joint with several families. And, you know, there was like a bartender. Like there were plenty that were, and I mean like bartender, like a hired bartender, right, not yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, one of us pouring drinks. Uh, exactly. So that was very much in line with my experience in the 90s, um, right down to the way my family did it being a little more low key. Like, I remember my dad being like, no, we're not doing that. But you can have I will stand at the grill and I will grill as many people burgers as you want to bring over. Right. So um, we, I did have a cake and I remember it was like a really big sheet cake and it took me ages to get through it. And I kept eating that cake for like way longer than I should have. Like it was sitting out on the counter for like four weeks or something. Um, it was so good. And then I probably had, and then a trickle of friends came through. My brother was home from the army. He had just completed maybe, oh no, he was stationed in Hawaii. So he was super tan and super buff. Uh -huh. And he sat around at the table and popped his muscles the entire time That's while all of my friends it's sat like around. Out of an eighties movie or something. It was truly, he even had like, I mean, it was just too much. Um, he had like, do you remember hypercolor? Yeah. Oh yes, I do. He had yeah. a hypercolor shirt and he'd be like, if you put your hand on my shirt, it'll leave a handprint. <laughs> so he had like handprints all over his shirt, which was like rolled up so you could see his stomach. <laughs> I mean, come on. It was ridiculous. But all of my friends were sitting around eating their burgers, like drooling over my brother. And oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember like what else even happened. Oh, then, so then my party wrapped up, um, a few hours, like, you know, it was like two hours, three hours. And then we all left, my friends, like my little friend group and I, who most of my friends were not graduating seniors. Most of my friends were um, juniors. Okay. Like I was much more friends with that group. So then we left my party and we went and party hopped the whole weekend. Wow. And there was also the big ragers where like the parents let the kids drink and all that stuff. I mean, that was, that's also still a thing. Like yeah. I, I hear about that. I haven't personally witnessed it. Um, I think usually <laughs> that's happening like later at night and I just am not. I'm not out late anymore, yeah. but like it, it definitely, it's a here. It is definitely a thing and has been for a very long time. I will also say the practice of inviting your family to the graduation itself has fallen out in a lot of communities because a lot of places you have to have a ticket. So oh, they might have like limited right. space and only two people can come. I believe some places you have to pay for that ticket, but I'm not sure if that's true. If that okay. might be me conflating like okay. prom and graduation. So maybe, you know, maybe if you're like a big city school where they're having the graduation indoors and there's only room for two, you would have the party to give everybody else something to do. But I just think at least here, it's just what's done. Okay. Well, that was fascinating. And listeners, yeah, email us what's typical in your area or if you can, I guess, identify with either of our very different experiences. I would love to hear or something totally different. Do you think, Megan, that the graduating kids... You know, this is such a like a broad question because every kid is so different. But you've talked a little bit about Will. Um, do you think they feel the weightiness and the meaningfulness and the significance of all this in their own way? Or at the senior and high school level, does it still feel like it's a lot about kind of the parents and the community marking the significance? I think I think they feel it, but I yeah. think they feel it for different reasons. Like they can't know what they don't know yet. Yeah. So they can't know that this is like, this is a meaningful moment in your life. And it's like, there's always some kid that gets up and gives a graduation speech and they'll say, I can't believe four years <laughs> went by in a flash. It's like, they all say some it version of that. It feels like so, yesterday. Exactly. That we were tiny like, freshmen with We've been backpacks. through some hard times, 
but we've got more hard times ahead. Like they all say some version of the same thing. And it's sweet because like they're saying the words and they have no idea what they're saying. Like they just don't know. Yeah. And so it's like they they know they should feel it and they they have a whiff of it. It's like they it's like the, the scent of it's like the LaCroix version yeah. of what life is like. They've got a little bit of that flavor that thinks something momentous is happening. Something big is changing, but they really don't know until they look back later, like how big and momentous that was. And there's no way to force it. You can't make them know what they don't know. No, they you know? can't. Will you yeah. tell about Will writing his thank you notes and how he didn't he put some of them off, but then it was because they were the most reflective, heartfelt thing ever. Do I have that right? Oh my gosh. Yes, you do. He um, did really drag his feet a lot on sending his graduation thank you notes, which I was pretty like, you know, you must do this yeah. about. And finally, like I had to write him about it all summer long. And when I find, and it wasn't that many, like he didn't get tons and tons. He didn't have that many guests and most of them were other kids. So he just think right. I didn't, I don't care if he thanked them. Yeah. <laughs> like th that's his problem. But like f family and um, my friends and things like that. He apparently had written like the sweetest thank you letters to everybody. So he spent a really long time. And my sister said hers was basically like not even really a thanks for the 40 bucks or whatever she got, you know, whatever he got for graduation. Right. It was like, thank you for all the times you've let the, us, you know, crash in your living room and all the memories you let us make in your house. It was like he really felt it. Yeah. Like he really saw the um the gravity and the the bigness of what was happening and like in a very like looking back and reflecting on how things have been and recognizing how much they'll change kind of a way. Yeah. And, and it very true to that. He was the one who wanted to make the biggest changes right after high school. He wanted yeah. to get out. He wanted to go to college. Like he saw that truly as a, a way of winding one thing down and starting something new and all the bittersweetness that goes with that. And I think some kids just aren't there yet. Yeah. Like I was saying, when I was sitting at my high school graduation, looking around and going, yeah, but we all, but we're still going to hang out. Right. Like I just wasn't quite ready. Well, I and you've think. talked about how, first of all, you were young for your grade age wise. And you've said that you were also a little naive as just as a teenager yeah. in general, you were, so that kind of tracks in a way that for you, you just hadn't probably lived enough life to believe in the significance. Whereas a kid with just more of that old soul or for whatever reason, the way they're wired might feel quite uh, weighty about it. Yeah. Um, moved by it. I can remember, um, like I said, my actual graduation ceremony, I didn't feel personally super tied to. However, I can remember the last dance performance of my senior year. I don't remember what it was, but we had for the size of my dance studio, we had quite a few graduating seniors, maybe five graduating seniors, and we weren't a, a huge studio. So the studio was losing five of the most senior dancers. And my ballet teacher, who was not an emotional, not an emotive woman, very like stoic and wonderful, but not like a, not a crier. She got yeah. up there at, I think maybe at the beginning or at the end and just briefly acknowledged each of the seniors and gave us a flower or something. And I remember her tearing up about talking about us. And then I remember crying like full tears at my last. So I, I maybe didn't feel it at graduation, but I certainly remember feeling the significance of the change that was about to happen. But for me, it came with dance and probably a choir too. I remember being so sad when the choir seniors would graduate and leave. I felt like we were losing like sending people off to war or something. <laughs> well, and I also think, yeah, like a year later when most of my friends graduated and we had sort of all of our ceremonial, the friend group is breaking up stuff. I felt yeah. it more then. Right. So it was like, I wasn't quite ready. I, I had only been at that school for three years and I was like, I'm just getting settled in here, yeah. guys. Like I'm just getting going. Don't, don't break, don't cut me off just yet. So there's yeah. a little bit of a premature feeling about it for me. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I am sending all the love to all the moms out there who have any kind of a graduation to get through and of, of any age this year. Um, you will cry and you will cry. That's, that's okay. <laughs> like we're cursing them. <laughs> well, no, I guess I'm just trying to validate that this is, yeah, it's not really avoidable. The feels right. about this kind of stuff. Um, so happy graduation season, everyone. We have yeah. a fun thing to talk about coming up this Friday. We're bringing back the Mom Hour Voices, which is a series that we've been doing for years on this show where we bring a voice or voices from outside of our little two-person co-host bubble 
onto the show. And this series has evolved over the years, but we're especially excited because coming up this Friday, we have two of our contributors talking to each other. We won't even be there, Megan. I mean, we'll be there in spirit, but not in voice or flesh. And I'm really excited about this because um, it's just a chance to get to know more of our contributor team without us having to be, you know, horning in on the conversation. So yeah, very excited about that. Definitely listen to that episode this Friday. And uh, definitely also go take our survey if you haven't yet. Um, We've had it up for a little bit. We've gotten a lot of responses, but we're hoping for more. And you can find that at themomhour.com slash survey. So check that out too. All right. We'll talk to everybody on Tuesday and check back for Jamie and Kia coming up on Friday. Talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to The Mom Hour. Everything we talked about in today's episode is available at themomhour.com. And hey, while you're there, you can find more than 500 podcast episodes, plus articles, playlists, and resources about motherhood and parenting at every stage. And if you like today's episode, we'd love it if you would take a minute to share the show with another mom in your life. You can also find us on Instagram at The Mom Hour, chatting and interacting with listeners between episodes. Thanks for being here, friends. We'll talk to you soon. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or use code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash the mom hour. Hey, everyone, we have a favor to ask. If you are an Apple Podcasts user, can you check really quickly to make sure you're still following the mom hour? Apple did one of their big software updates recently, and it changed a bunch of things about how you get the podcasts you're subscribed to. If Apple Podcasts is your podcast app of choice, all you have to do is find your way to our show page and then click the little plus sign or follow in the top right corner. Thanks so much.